Hello guys, good evening everyone. This is Life Issue and this is Blessing. Thank you so much for joining me this evening on this hot viral story that is making the rounds this evening and it's all about organ harvesting. Now, this story involves our former Deputy Senate President, Ike Ekwaramadu, and his wife. If you've not read the story, if you have not heard about the story, I'm going to give you a little bit of rundown of what is going on and what happened. So apparently, one of Ekwaramadu's um, daughter is seriously sick and they needed an organ transplant. So Ekramadu decided to pay for a minor, a poor citizen of Nigeria, to be transported to the UK and for the person's organ to be donated for his daughter. Now, this is a visa section application that Ekwaramadu actually, um, the letter that he gave, and he gave his bank statement, but one of the things that he did not actually reveal was that this child was a minor, and he was not yet to the age of accountability and concert for his um, organs to be donated, Okay. They must have paid this family or the child. And this child was actually transported to the UK by E.K. Ekwaramadu and the wife for this guy's organ to be used to save his own child. Now, I want you to listen to the news by our UK news outlets about what actually happened. So please listen to this. Okay, well, let's move straight on to other news now. Now, Nigerian senator has been charged with allegedly plotting to harvest the organs of a boy brought to the UK. The 15-year-old alleged victim is now in care. Now, the accused and his wife appeared before Uxbridge Magistrates Court today, and uh, Ian Woods is there in an extraordinary case. And what details emerged today? There are very few details that we can bring you other than to say that the 15-year-old boy who is the, uh, the centre of the case uh, is, uh, cannot be named for legal reasons. We can, though, identify the two people who were accused of exploiting them. They are Beatrice Nwanika Ikweri Madu, who's 55, and her 60-year-old husband, E.K. Now, he's a very well-known figure in Nigeria, where he's a lawyer, a senator, and a former deputy president of the Nigerian Senate. He held that position for 12 years. The couple are charged with conspiracy to arrange or facilitate travel of another person with a view to exploitation, namely organ harvesting. Now, the Metropolitan Police said in a statement that their investigation began last month when they were alerted to potential offences under modern slavery uh, legislation. The boy himself is now in care and has been offered continued support. The accused couple, although they live in Nigeria, they do have a family connection to London. They were in court for less than an hour. It was then adjourned for two weeks. The reason for the adjournment is that the Attorney General has to rule on jurisdiction in this case because, of course, there are two countries involved, Nigeria and London. Uh, so they'll be back in court on July the 7th. Uh, a bail application was turned down, so they've been remanded in custody until then. Okay, Carl Woodson, please. Hi, so that's the story. If you don't know the full story, that's the story. Uh, I'm going to read um, some of Nigerian popular news websites and that updated what actually happened. Uh, so basically, um, they have appeared in court today and they are now in police custody. Um, both Ike Kormado and the wife Beatrice, they are in police custody and they are being accused of organ harvesting, planning to 
harvest a minor's organ for their own child. And this child happens to be a 15-year-old homeless boy. Like, this child was homeless. They picked this child on the streets and they paid for his, um, what will I say now, travel to the UK. And all they wanted to do was to have vest his organ for their own child to leave. So someone else's child who is homeless that you should be helping. You guys are the one that have torn our society, our country, where we have people who do not have money, they don't have food, they don't have shelter, they do not have hope. You guys have torn our country that way. Not only that, instead of you to help this child who is homeless, who might not have any form of education, what you decided to do was to pay for this child to come to the UK and you will use his organ for your own child who actually went to school in the UK, who you have brought up, yeah, to be highly educated, a master degree holder, but as God will have it, God is still punishing you upon the money that you have. And now you now decided to use a homeless child to save your own child. You put us in this situation. Seriously, you put the country in this situation and yet, yet, you have the heart to take a homeless child from the streets who was a minor. You want to sacrifice his life for your own child. Hey, UK government don't get kiss. So this particular case, eh? hey, <coughs> we will follow you to the end. It's not that, like, you know, that one I like about UK government is that they are not like Nigerian government now. So now that Boris Johnson is looking for a way to make his case for the Rwandan refugees and asylum and try to make a political case. So everybody's eyes is going to be on this particular case to know how it is settled and we'll be watching it to know how it will turn out. And you know, the most annoying thing is that these people don't understand that karma is a bitch. You guys might have the whole money you guys might embezzle all the money, but God have a way of still putting you in that kind of situation that your money cannot save you, your wealth cannot save you. All the billions and the millions that you have accumulated cannot save you. Check out. Check out Sunubu. Check out Buhari. Check out all of them. They are all passing through one health issue or the other that their money cannot save them. And then knowing that your money cannot save you, instead of you to at least pray to God and ask God, what can I do? How can I help the poor? How can, how can I come out of this sin? You and your wife now decide to pick a boy who is homeless. Hey, a, someone who did not have hope, you must have done good, maybe 5,000 naira or maybe 10,000, maybe say 100,000. Oh yeah, I'll take you to the UK. The guy doesn't even know what, what he was going there to do. They took him to the hospital, trying to have vest his, his, his organ, only for them to ask the boy, how old are you? Poor boy now. The guy said he's 15. Rather, our own deputy, former deputy senior president for eight years old. These are, these are the kind of people that are really nuts. These are the kind of people that we have entrusted our country to that will sell us and sell everything that we have all for their own good. They don't care. They are very selfish, self-centered, but yet 
God is dealing with them. Keep, keep collecting all the money. Keep trying to put us under. But yet, that one thing, that one thing that you desire is always being eluded. Health. You, you, your millions cannot give, you cannot give you that good health that you want. So this story, when I saw it, I was like, you know what? I need to bring it here for you guys to see the kind of people that we have entrusted Nigeria with. And yet we have people glamoring for another person who is so sick. We can clearly see that this man is not okay. How many people's organ have the current person that is really not taken? How many people are they sacrificing for their own children, for their own life? This one we got to know. Because what the plan did not work out. What if he had, what if he had succeeded? Then his own child will be saved. While another man's child that he could have helped, that he could have supported, that he could have put the right enablement and environment to help, he decided to take his organ. Is the organ harvesting is not new. It's been, it's been on for some time now. Some of this accident that is going on, some of this kidnapping, some of these missing people. To be frank with you, they are all linked to organ harvesting. Because God has taken sleep away from them. If they refuse to make Nigerian better, then that thing that they glamour so much will be taken from them. And that is good health. And if it's not from them, from their children, children, and from their children. So his daughter now, apparently this is the second time he's been duped. He paid um, a Turkish, I think he's um, a Turkish um, donor, 20,000 um, 20, US, um, US dollar, and the person did not bring the kidney. And it's someone's kidney that they are looking for. Kidney. He paid 20,000 UK and US dollar. The person did not bring the kidney. And now, he now decided to go to the streets of maybe, I don't know whether in Lagos or Abuja or maybe Abao or Umuahe or Enugu. I don't know where this Ikere, Ikekere Madu or whatever his name is. And this guy's name that he took, Nana Ibo Man, Upo, Upo. Maybe Ibo Man or there's, there's even Upo. Upo, Upo is Ibo. Is he not? Yeah? Upo, one mini David. Now, Ibo man, where you go carry? Eh? The streets, beggar. Someone that he could just give maybe 100,000. The man go kukuma follow him. I go UK. Ah uh ah. -uh. You know, say na, na slaughterhouse where they carry him go. And also, I question, you know, you know, when we talk about this, we talk about the, the receiving end, the hospitals in this part of the world, that someone will just come all the way from Nigeria. And you are willing to accept that person and take the kidney. Don't they understand the poverty and the kind of suffering that is happening in Africa? That a rich person can actually convince your parents to sell you for Kobo. Just 100,000, 500, just take. We see it happening almost every day. Children are being sold. People are being killed. Girlfriends are being killed and their body parts are vested. And this is why. You know, this is another type of slavery. I was reading a story about what is happening in um, Liberia where some Africans, Nigerians have gone to Liberia. They are being harvested, organ harvesting. It's another story that we need to be talking about on social media. This one just came up. Now we know. But this has been happening for a long time. I'm going to be following up this story to see what happened to this man. Now, they don't test UK prison. <laughs> Voila. They don't test them. And inside prison, where they day, at least they go day there till when the case comes. But anyway, he's so lucky that UK prison is not like Niger prison, where they, where you, they don't go suffer you. At least he's going to eat 
you go to eat good food, sha. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, guys, this is what is what this is the story making rounds now. And to be frank with you, it is appalling. And it's something that we all need to be very careful. When someone tells you, I go send you, I go send you. At yeah, yeah, thank you, kitchen advocate. Yeah. You know, the, the guy, he must have picked the guy and he told the girl, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you scholarship. We never hear the whole story. The whole story will come. The family of the child will go come and tell us. Maybe he told the guy you are going on scholarship to, to U, UK. I'm paying for your scholarship. The guy go Wakago scholarship. You know, no say now in now, now, now in Kine, they won't go harvest. Eh? Then what about the what about the hospitals that someone is coming from um, Africa? They've never visited in the UK before. They don't know anything about the UK. And right from the airports, they bring the person to the hospital. What about your own due diligence? What about your own investigation? Are they not enabling such things happening? We all need to talk about it. Because the hospitals that are here, that are on the receiving end, they, they are collecting those people. And they can see you can't speak English. You are not educated. You could see that this person is not is malnourished. And the person comes and is and brought by a big man. And they tell you, okay, well, the person is, is donating their, their kidney. And you do not question, how come? This is what we call slavery. This, the slavery is not ended. You know, we think that slavery has ended. It is no, there's a different kind of slavery going on. It's a different kind of, you know, bondage that we are being faced in Africa. And it is organ harvesting. I'm telling you, you we need to be talk, we need to start talking about it. And it's not just happening in Nigeria, it's happening everywhere. South Africa, Slurin, Liberia. There are stories out there about organ harvesting. And we need to talk about it. Thank God this guy has been caught. Maybe there will be a spotlight on this particular issue. And people will now know about it. Now, make them go for, for UK prison. At least, even if not three days where they, where they stay there. Uh -huh. May they, may they cool their head there for, for some minutes, okay? All right, guys, just let me just bring this story to you so it can be all the, you know, very careful out there and know that, hmm, hey, some of this money, where did they promise us? Tell us, say, they will send us go UK, they will give us now, now, now our harvest, where they come harvest our heart to. We all need to be very careful out there. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please help me share. Please help me talk about this on your social. Let's create awareness. Let's send this video viral so that people will know what is happening and how wicked the people that are supposed to be representing us are. This is someone that we called a deputy senate president. Could pick a proper someone on the streets with intention to harvest the person's kidney. May God punish all of them. Kishin Kavaku said, I feel government should make hospital insure such a... Yeah. <coughs> I mean, it is what it is. I mean, yeah, you're right. But you know what? They give them millions. You know, they just close their mouths. We, we know what is going on. It's, it's another form of slavery. They can't kill their own people. They cannot kill their own children. They just go to the streets. Homeless people promise them whatever, promise them whatever, and they just dash them their children. This is what is going on. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please try and support my channel by subscribing. Also, make sure that you drop your comments after my video on my comment section. Please help me like. Please help me, you know, subscribe. Thank you. God bless you.